Today's webinar is titled Getting More from Apple TV with Digital Signage. My name is Sam Weiss. I'm an education evangelist here at Jamf. And I'm JJ Parker, the CEO at Carousel Digital Signage. Great. Uh, just a quick overview of today. Before we go too deep, we're going to level set and we're going to have a discussion on what is digital signage. It means different things to different people. So it's good that we all use the same terminology here. Uh, we're going to do a carousel overview. And that is, um, we're going to get an overview of the software, how it works, and how it integrates with Jamf. We've been working on our integration for about two years now, and we're really excited to show it to you. Then we're going to roll into an automated enrollment demo. We're going to take all the tech that we talk about today and put it together so that you can see exactly uh, how this all looks in action. And then lastly, I'm going to give you some inf instructions and information how to set this up in Jamf Pro. If Carousel is something you want to bring to your organization, it's very easy to do so. But before we get started too far, I wanted to especially welcome those of you that are new to Jamf. Jamf is on year 16 of our journey to help organizations succeed with Apple. And whether you're big or small, corporate, education, healthcare, or otherwise, Jamf can help you manage your Apple devices and give your end users the best possible experience. Over 18,000 customers rely on Jamf to manage upwards of 11 million devices daily. And Jamf's focus on zero-day support, our phenomenal technical support, and unique integrations, like what we're going to talk about with Carousel today, make Jamf the gold standard for Apple device management. And when we think about device management at Jamf, it's more than just about apps and settings. It's about the entire Apple device lifecycle. We think about what it takes to go from pallets of devices and warehouses to a useful device in an end user's hand and removing as many of those steps in between as possible for both users and IT. Jamf's ability to collect and act on the inventory of hardware and software make it easy to deploy, manage, and secure devices. And our tools like self-service enable end users to install their own software, printers, and access other resources, all without needing admin rights. Before going too much further, if someone could chat that they are hearing us, uh, I've got two chats saying that they can't. And all right, sounds good. Uh, must, must be a, a user issue, so we're going to keep going here. Um, all right, so our discussion on digital signage today is really going to focus on three core tenets of Apple device management. True zero-touch deployment of an Apple TV device, Jamf's ability to wirelessly and automatically provision and con configure a device, and finally, app management. And if you've seen Jamf's famous post-it note, you know that we believe that after opening the box and plugging it in, there should be no step three. And today, we're going to show you how to go from shrink wrap to digital signage in less than two minutes. So before we get ahead of ourselves, JJ, what do we mean when we say digital signage? So for us, you know, digital signage is uh, simply allowing people to create and manage uh, messages that are on displays in public areas. So we've all seen it. Um, it's images, text, and video um, in places like airports and restaurants and schools and even billboards on the side of the road. Um, so there's a, a couple um, parts to a digital signage system. Uh, first, the content management software that helps users create and manage content like our Carousel digital signage software. Uh, the media player which connects to the display and plays the content. Um, and of course, the display. Um, focusing on the media player, traditionally, these media players are small, like Windows-based computers um, or little custom hardware devices. So JJ, how does content get on a media player? So content will get on a media player in one of two ways. The first one, um, the most basic, is someone just copies it on there, right? either uh, putting some files on an SD card or a USB drive and physically plugging it into the media player. That media player picks up that content and then just starts playing it through. The second way would be that if the media player is on the network, then the content management software can push the content onto the media player. So JJ, what does it take today 
in a non-Apple TV world to install and configure a media player. So today, um, if you're running a Windows-based media player, obviously you have to install Windows. You have to go do all of the uh, Windows updates. Uh, you got to install the uh, digital signage player application. You have to configure it to go grab the content from the content management software. Um, you know, make sure it's on the network and make sure all the security things are right on it um, and all that. So uh, it's uh, it's a little labor intensive. So when we think about the potential of Apple TV as a media player, it becomes really interesting uh, for a few reasons. One, first and foremost, an Apple TV is a Jamf manageable platform. So we can manage the OS updates as well as software updates for things like Carousel. And automated enrollment gives you a true hands-off setup experience. Yeah, this uh, zero-touch deployment for media players for us is like the most amazing thing because... Like I was saying, in, in the past, uh, the media player has been so hands-on to deploy, and that's okay if you're deploying like a couple of them or even a couple dozen of them. But when you start deploying hundreds or thousands, uh, it's a, it's a, a real-time um, commitment. So using uh, Jamf uh, and Apple TVs for this zero-touch deployment is, uh, is a really big deal. Beyond just being a good technical fit, the Apple TV is a really cost-effective solution as well. You get really phenomenal graphics out of an Apple TV compared to other sub-$200 micro PCs, and you can order them directly from your Apple business team or education reps. And you're probably already using them in many of the environments where digital signage makes sense because AirPlay is well-known and used in classrooms and conference rooms worldwide. Yeah, the, um, the AirPlay features on Apple TV are are really great and we're really excited to um, use that in conjunction with digital signage. So, you know, an Apple TV as a media player um, can be used in all of the same places that a traditional media player could be put. Um, but there's a couple of things um, that really make the Apple TV shine, like a couple of places. So, uh, and where it really lines up well is in conference rooms and classrooms. So uh, let's talk about classrooms. Uh, so Jamf is in Minnesota, Carousel is in Minnesota, and uh, that's, you know, in the northern part of the, the U.S., and we get a little bit of snow here. Um, so I want you guys to imagine that we're in school. All the students are nestled in in the middle of the winter um, for, for their lessons. Um, and in the front of the classroom is the display, and it's running digital signage, right? It's showing the uh, school's announcements, uh, what's happening, the lunch menus, the schedules for the week, that sort of stuff. And this is a great place for students to get information um, ab about what's going on uh, in their school because uh, they're not racing between classes, right? Um, signage in the hallways isn't quite as effective because the students aren't ever standing still there. Um, but in the classroom, they are. They're, they're sat down. They're paying more attention. Um, teacher walks in, ready for the lesson. Um, they can use their iPad or their Mac, and they can AirPlay right up to the front of the classroom onto that display. Um, works flawlessly um, when they're done with their lesson. When that AirPlay session ends, the display goes right back to the signage. So again, imagine we're in Minnesota, um, and a snowstorm rolls in. And the teacher's in the middle of their lesson, and the school staff decides, hey, we got to call school early because uh, everyone's going to get snowed in. Um, a really awesome thing that the Jamf and Carousel integration can do is while those AirPlay sessions are happening during class, if the principal creates a high-importance message, Carousel can actually trigger Jamf to uh, kill all the AirPlay sessions and show that important message. So we can do visual communication into the classrooms, which I think is like a really big deal, um, especially for campus safety initiatives and, and things like that. The other great use case for digital signage uh, in schools is that a lot of these places are multi-use facilities, right? They're a school during the day and, and most of the time, but in the evening, they might be something else or there might be a special event. On the weekend, they might be doing uh, 
you being used more as like a community center. So the great thing about signage in that environment is that we can switch out all of the content from being school content to being uh, community center content with a click of a button. So then moving on to uh, corporate, we've got um, uh, a customer, Fluid Interiors. Um, they're a uh, interior design firm, and they do beautiful work. And they've got an office showroom here in Minneapolis, and it's immaculate. It's like the most beautifully de designed uh, office environment I've ever seen. And I walked in there um, a while back, and I was admiring all of their chairs and their desks. And I was looking around, and they had screens in their conference rooms, in their common areas, and all of these little nooks, and they were all black. Um, and I, and it just really struck me. I thought, like, wow, this beautiful space has giant black like squares everywhere in it. Um, so we worked with them to uh, put carousel signage uh, into their facility um, and turn all those black screens into digital signs. And what's that, what that's done for them is uh, it's a beautiful place where they can showcase their wonderful design work and their wonderful client work. Um, that really increases employee engagement, really creates a different you know, sense of community and um, uh, pride in their work. Um, they also use it for uh, employee communications, welcoming uh, people into their uh, facility uh, you know, as guests. So, um, and they use it in their conference room. So again, like people idly around um, you know, watching the signage, uh, watching this beautiful content, and then being able to airplay when they have a meeting right in the, in that conference room. So, um, so Carousel, kind of an, a quick overview is the the thing that we do is we help facilities communicate in the places where people gather, um, and there's a couple of things that are really important for us when we do that. Um, we think. Uh, it's really important for everybody to participate in digital signage. Um, we've been in the signage business for a really long time, and uh, the worst thing for digital signage is having content that is old um, or not relevant to the space. Uh, so the way that we make sure that the content is relevant is by creating a more collaborative tool around digital signage where um, the marketing people, the receptionists, the managers, everyone can log in and create the content for their space. Uh, we also do that by building a tool that helps keep that content fresh with uh, dynamic playlists and data integrations like pulling in calendar information or um, different feeds of data that you probably already have so no one has to retype it. Great way to keep your content fresh. Um, and we also focus on long-term value of signage. So um, making sure that you, once you install it, the ongoing um, administration of it doesn't cost too much over time. And that's one of the things that gets us so excited about Apple TV and Jamf is that it, it really lowers that ongoing cost of running a signage network. So JJ, how exactly does Carousel work? It's super easy. Um, Carousel, Carousel is just a web interface. Um, user logs into it, um, and then they basically choose a template. A lot of the Carousel content creation tools are based around templates, um, and that's like a key um, piece of the puzzle for us because it allows lots of people to create content, uh, but it uh, make sure that we are adhering to our branding standards and our style guides and we're making content that looks good. So we choose a template, type in the content. Um, we can schedule when it goes on and off uh, the displays and we hit publish. And from there, Carousel basically takes care of the rest. It pushes it out to the appropriate media player, the appropriate Apple TV. The Apple TV picks it up, shows it on the display, and that's it. So it works really well, uh, and one of the reasons it does is Jamf and Carousel have been working on our integration for about the last two years, and our integration really covers three broad topics. 
The first is deployment. Jamf offers that true zero-touch deployment of an Apple TV device, and our supportive app config allows admins or site technicians to literally plug in HDMI, power, Ethernet, and walk away, uh, knowing that in just moments, that Apple TV will automatically provision itself. Furthermore, for daily workflows, the Carousel Player dashboard is connected to your Jamf Pro instance, and that allows you to jump directly to that Apple TV's specific device record within Jamf to allow for easy troubleshooting and setup. And lastly, as JJ mentioned before, Carousel's API integration with Jamf Pro allows it to modify a device's AirPlay behavior during a high priority bu bulletin. Yeah, and this is a super cool feature. And <clears throat> one of the great things about Jamf is that um, the way Jamf works and the way Carousel works with Jamf is um, by being able to change the behavior on the Apple TV um, and the flexibility within Jamf um, is great because not everyone wants it to work exactly the same. Um, and so, so each customer can actually customize the kind of uh, single app and AirPlay behavior they want for their particular situation, which is great. So we've talked a lot of tech, but before we go any further, JG and I wanted to take a minute to show you exactly how this looks when you put it all together. So what you're going to see here is a, uh, a demonstration of exactly what the setup process looks like for an Apple TV with Carousel managed by Jamf. Now, this demonstration hasn't been sped up at all, and it uses all the components that we've already talked about today. Uh, it is pre-recorded, but it still gives me chills every time I see it. So right now, uh, a screen you're probably very familiar with, the Apple TV is just booted up, and in a traditional consumer workflow, it would be waiting for that remote uh, to come within range, connect, and click to go to the very next stage. What this TV is doing is it's waiting to be assigned an IP address on our network. And in just a second here, three, two, one, uh, autom automated enrollment kicks off. The device is coming under management with Jamf Pro, and it's falling into these smart groups that drive automated actions. So the very next thing to happen is the single app mode profile for Carousel is going to come down, bringing us to a gray screen, and then just moments later, the Carousel app will install, and that app configuration uh, sets that Carousel server URL, and you're done. So in less than two minutes, we've gone from shrink wrap to digital signage. Yeah, this is, this is totally remarkable to me. You know, being in the industry so long, um, knowing how... Uh, you know, media players have been deployed in the past. The idea that you can buy a device and you don't have to touch it at all other than plugging power in uh, and it becomes a digital sign is, is amazing. So now what I want to do is we've seen how easy it is to go from shrink wrap to digital signage. I want to show you what on the back end you would have to do inside Jamf to make this a possibility in your environment. Carousel has put together a fantastic... Uh, integration guide at the link below, but I'm just going to very quickly step you through the four steps that it takes to get Carousel up and running in your Jamf server. So the very first thing you want to do is create a unique mobile device pre-stage for Carousel Apple TV devices. Doing this will help keep your Jamf Pro server organized, as well as allow for some very cool automation later on. And if you were to scroll down just a little bit in your pre-stage, you would see an option called Auto Advanced Through Setup Assistant. When this is checked, as soon as the device gets on a network, which we recommend doing through Ethernet, as soon as the device enrolls, it will blow through the rest of the Setup Assistant. Now, this is a tvOS-only feature that allows the entire device to set up without even a remote required. So this makes it very different today than Mac OS or even iOS, because when we talk about zero touch deployment, we're generally referring to zero IT touch, where with the Apple TV, you technically could just walk away and it will do what it's supposed to. Another good tip for organization later on, Jamf Pro allows you to set the device name upon enrollment. So personally, I would highly recommend, re recommend using a prefix called Apple TV carousel, followed by the serial number. And again, Organization now will pay dividends later on. 
Lastly, for our pre-stage, you'll want to scope the devices to it. Uh, basically, you just check the boxes. And when that device either powers on for the first time or the first time after a reset, it will follow the instructions that we set out earlier. Step two is super simple. Uh, we need to create a smart group for our carousel devices. And for those of you new to Jamf, smart groups are dynamic lists of devices that are populated based on inventory that Jamf Pro has about that device. In this particular instance, we want to build a smart group based on which pre-stage enrollment a device came in with. So we point it back to that pre-stage that we made in step one. Step three is adding the carousel app record to your mobile device catalog. So after purchasing carousel via volume purchasing in Apple Business or School Manager, you'll want to find it in Jamf Pro to set a few options. And we're actually going to stop at every single one of the tabs uh, on the app record. Under general, we want to switch the distribution method to install automatically. On the scope tab, we're going to simply scope this app to that smart group that we made just moments ago. For the VPP tab, we're going to check the box that allows us to assign VPP content to devices instead of Apple IDs. So this means no Apple ID is required on the Apple TV, and the app will install automatically with no user interaction required. And the last tab is one that you may have spent very little time in. Uh, maybe you stopped here when you first set up Jam for self-service, but it's super important for our example. App configuration does exactly what it sounds like. You can pre-configure app settings such as server addresses, logins, and a whole lot more. In this case, we're making the Carousel app aware of its own Carousel server URL. So again, we don't have to go to that Apple TV to configure anything. And lastly, in step four, you will create a single app mode configuration profile for Carousel. So as soon as this profile hits the device, it will try to launch the specified app and will keep it launched until that profile is removed. And same as in step one, we simply need to scope this to that Carousel device smart group. And that's it, there is no step five. But in all seriousness, I hope that you can see that you can go from shrink wrap to signage, both for an end user or a site technician, just as easily as you can set it up within Jamf. So as we're wrapping up here, I wanted to give a special thanks and shout out to Chris Miller from Eans ISD in Austin, Texas. As Carousel finalized their Apple TV player and Jamf integration, we needed some test sites to see the product in action and get some feedback. And with a decent number of Apple TVs already deployed, Eans was a great early adopter. Uh, for those of you that visited us at JNUC, Chris was in our interactive lab talking about getting additional stakeholder buy-in from principals and more for these types of programs. I encourage you to connect with him either on Twitter or on the Mac Admins Apple TV Slack channel uh, if you'd like to know more. And not only was he kind enough to share some of these templates that they've been using at Eans, he was also able to share the creators of that content. That's right, students in digital design classes were able to collaborate and use their skills to build dynamic and engaging channels for the rest of the schools. Yeah, Sam, this, this image really warms my heart because <clears throat> part of Carousel is getting everybody involved, um, building community, and this is such a great, uh, a great visual for that because we've got students, they're learning, they're engaged, they're creating content for uh, for their peers and their fellow students, and uh, and making their uh, their school a better place. So this is a this is a great example. So thank you, Chris. So with that, if you'd like to know more about Carousel, simply visit CarouselSignage.com, and you can find Carousel and other really interesting Jamf integrations on our marketplace at marketplace.jamf.com. So with that, JJ and I would like to thank you for joining us today. And have a great rest of your day. All right. And with that, uh, we'd love to open it up for Q&A. Uh, as a reminder, Q&A is not included in the recording, but we'd love to answer any questions that you have now. All right. So, Sam, we have a question. Do all the TVs have to show the same thing? Um, so the answer is no. So each TV um, or display would have an app, a, a, 
uh, Apple TV, its own Apple TV behind it. And uh, the content for each one of those can be either the same or completely different. Okay, great. Uh, we're getting another question here about calendars and scheduling and the ability to integrate with iCal or Google calendars. <clears throat> That's a great question. Uh, yep, so Carousel can pull in uh, pull in calendaring data from a variety of different sources, uh, including iCal feeds, which would be generated by a variety of different calendaring programs, including Google Calendar. Um, and the great thing is, is uh, it can bring it in and it can format it for uh, digital signage. So one of the things when we talk about putting, uh, displaying digital signage content, especially text, is we have to make sure that there's not too much of it. It's the right size. It's the right font and weight so it's readable from a distance. Um, you know, that's what one of the powerful things that Carousel can do is it can take in data feeds and then format them um, for signage display. Awesome. Uh, we've got another question here about live video streaming support. Does Carousel support live video streaming on Apple TV? Uh, it does. Um, it will support uh, the same uh, kind of streaming that the, the Apple TV will support, and specifically that's HLS streams. Awesome. I've got no more questions on... Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, you had to scroll. There's a I bunch more scroll. questions. Yeah. <laughs> So, question from John, will I need the latest Apple TVs to implement this digital signage solution or will it run on early Apple TVs? Good so, question. It's a great question. The answer is no. <laughs> Fourth gen Apple TVs are required because um, those are the ones that um, have the ability to load uh, third party apps onto it. Uh, do you offer K-12 discounts? The answer is yes. Um, we actually have a very... Uh, a special place in our hearts for for K twelve, um, and uh, we do everything we can we can to uh, to support uh, school districts and and K twelve education. So we do have special K twelve pricing. Um, reach out to us directly um, on our website, and uh, and we'll get you that pricing. All right, getting some questions about emergency notification systems and your ability to integrate with them. Yep. Uh, specifically, looks like there's a question, have you ever worked with single wire in Informacast? Uh, yes. So we implement what's called the Common Alert Protocol, or for short, it's called CAP. Um, and most of the emergency alert systems also support the CAP protocol. So that means that when you make a message in single wire, uh, it posts a message at the carousel server um, with that uh, emer emergency content or emergency message. Um, we format that to uh, signage and then push it out to all the Apple TVs. Awesome. And that also can trigger Jamf to kill all the AirPlay sessions. So um, that sort of uh, chain of uh, automation all works. Excellent. All right. Got some other really great questions here. Um, in a room with multiple displays receiving the same content from Carousel, will they play the media at the same time, or will there be a delay between the displays? That Sounds is, like we're talking about like video wall. That almost. is well, that's a great question. Um, actually, I was in a meeting room yesterday that they put four displays in one on each wall, and uh, when we presented, it mirrored to all of them, um, which I thought was a clever thing. Um, that was not done with Apple TVs, so I'll have to have a chat with them. But uh, um, the answer is that uh, they will not all be in sync because each Apple TV, while it would have the same uh, list of content playing, we don't synchronize the playlists uh, from a playback perspective across multiple uh, Apple TVs. So, um, so they would all kind of be randomly out of sync from each other. I guess I would explain it that way. Sounds like a feature request. <laughs> um, got a question from Steven. Uh, what is the difference between the Carousel Cloud Player and Carousel Player in the Apple App Store? Steven, you've already been poking around. Um, so we have two versions of the Carousel uh, CMS. One is an on-premise version, and one is a cloud version. So uh, 
the Carousel Player app is specifically for the on-premise, we call it Carousel 7 on our website, uh, for the on-premise version of Carousel. And uh, Carousel Cloud Player is the one specifically for our hosted cloud product. Great. Uh, got a really great question from Rob. I'm a department head in a school. Are there levels of control? In other words, can I control what is on the TVs in the math classrooms while the English head can control what is signaged in the English classrooms? And then can it all be overridden by district IT? Yeah, great question, Rob. Uh, yes. So uh, Carousel uh, has a very uh, deep set of uh, permissioning. So not only can we decide which Apple TVs people have access to, we can actually we can actually restrict them to only certain parts of that screen if we wanted. Um, and then uh, we can also share content across multiple uh, channels, uh, and we can give other users the ability to go ahead and override all of the content. So um, there's lots of great use cases when you start refining the permissions, like even down to um, you know, teachers having discrete control over the content in their classroom, then maybe the department being able to add content, um, and then ultimately the the administration um, being able to control everything. Um, the other cool thing that some of our customers will do, they'll even give um, access to the signage to, like, the custodial staff, um, but only in override situations. So, like, their experience with Carousel would be extremely limited where they would just log in, click, you know, uh, we got to close the parking lot for um, maintenance, and it could just override the content and show, like, very specific content. So uh, we love permissions and uh, getting everyone involved. Awesome. Um, gosh, you're all asking really great questions. Um, does Carousel support offline access? So as an example, what happens if our network goes down? Does oh, the signage go down with it? We start all the Apple TVs on fire. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, great question. Um, all of the signage content is uh, locally cached onto the Apple TV. So there's no like um, active streaming. It's only actually doing network traffic while when a, when a content update happens. So if the network goes down for any reason, that Apple TV is just going to keep playing the same thing it's been doing. Um, the administrator will actually get an email or they could see it in the carousel dashboard that says, hey, I've lost contact with a particular Apple TV. Um, and then once the network connectivity is restored, uh, it will contact the carousel server, uh, resynchronize any uh, content changes and be on its merry way. Okay, uh, we've got a really great question. Sounds like someone that had used Carousel early on. Um, they weren't able to use the Carousel app without <laughs> signing uh, because we didn't have VPP for tvOS. Is that now different? Yes. Uh, Apple did release VPP for tvOS. Um, I think both Carousel and Jamf had a small party in our offices that day. Um, and it works really great. So just like any VPP app experience, you can um, grab it off the public app store and uh, deploy it and throw it into single app mode. Uh, works wonderfully. Awesome. Um, got a lot of questions on pricing. Is it fair to say contact Carousel? Yeah. So um, pricing is on our website. Uh, we've got a pricing calculator right there. Um, if you are a K-12 institute, um, contact us and um, uh, we'll work you up a uh, separate quote. But uh, all the pricing is uh, right on the website. Excellent. I'm um, going to pick one more question here. Uh, how does the signage operate outside of single app mode so that teachers can still use apps downloaded to the Apple TV? Does it have to be activated manually in the classroom? Uh, I guess the first thing I would say is I'd love to hear what Apple TV apps that your teachers are interested in. We, we are actually really trying to dive into that right now to find out what are the use cases. Um, but, JJ, fair to say that it would be a manual trigger yep, at that it, point? It would be a manual trigger. Um, and, uh, yeah, they would just use the remote, uh, go right back out to the home screen and and do whatever, uh, run whatever app they wanted. Awesome. So I think we've answered most of the questions. Uh, just want to recap for some folks. CarouselSignage.com is where you can go for more information. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, 
if you want to take this conversation further, I'm on Twitter at jamf underscore Sam. Um, I can also be reached at sam.weiss at jamf.com. Again, thank you everyone so much and have a great rest of your week.